Hey everybody, this is Mike Worth again from Mike Worth Art. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today about, um, a lot of people ask me how I make the timelines and things that I use in some of my infographics so that they're accurate and still exciting and can take on more than just a line shape, but something more than that. So here's an example from the infographic we did for Design for America. Um, this is the process of how a bill becomes a law. And as you can see, um, I built this sort of inchworm looking game board thing that has multiple colors and segments, um, but also represents a, a, a specific amount of time. In addition to that, we also have the timeline here that shows um, the amount of time that the United States flag had a particular amount of stars. So this was a circular timeline, but as you can see, it's segmented and has colors. Um, and represents a specific amount of time. So, we're going to open up Illustrator, and I'm going to show you guys how I go about doing that. Okay, so we're going to do this uh, by hand. Um, it's a really sort of simple technique, and we're going to take advantage of the info palette, um, as well as just right now using the rectangle tool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, click on the rectangle tool to get it started, but then I'm going to single click inside the active space and it brings up this rectangle um, pop-up and it lets me set some specific numbers. Now what I love about Illustrator is that uh, in these boxes you can actually do math. So if, if you have your overall um, uh, measurements set to points or inches or whatever, you can always sort of work with something else. So I'm most native with pixels and we're going to use that um, as a way to represent time. Okay, so. We're going to make up some arbitrary values, but we're going to put it all together into a groovy timeline. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to say that the width of this is 50. Let's say something lasted 50 years. And then I'm going to type PX after that. Now because my settings are set here to point, um, I can just type that in and it will translate. Obviously, pixels are um, equal to points here. Right? But if you have anything else, it will just translate to that value. And then for height, um, I guess we can start off with, uh, let's go 50 on that as well. Okay, so this will give us a nice box, all right, and it's uh, got no fill on it right now, so I'm just going to give it a bit of color, all right, so right now I'm interested in mostly the width of this, right, because it's 50 years. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click again and make another box, and I'm going to say now this is 75 is the width, and I'm going to leave the height of 50 because we want this to be a consistent looking graphic, and we'll say okay. All right, and there now is my uh, value of 75. So I've got 50, 75, and we're going to keep doing this. We're going to set up a few values. Let's say that this is 15, right? This is a much shorter time period, let's say, in the timeline that we're creating. Okay, there it goes. And in the end, after I make all these, I am going to use the Align palette to get them all to line up, and I'm also going to smush them together um, so that they are consistent. Let's say this is 80. Okay, I'm not so worried anymore um, about typing in PX because I know that points are equal, excuse me, points are equal to um, pixels, so it's not such a big deal. Let's say this is 150. Okay, and then, oh, I keep doing that. And then there's a low period here of 25. Okay. And when I was working on the United States flag project, I looked at how long the flag looked a certain way, meaning how many um, in between intervals of adding states to the Union. So that was how I, how I determined the value of a specific location by year. All right, and then lastly, let's just say 38, some random sort of amount of time. Okay, groovy. All right, so I have now a bunch of segments, and I have auto snap on, so that's why everything's aligning, but I'm just gonna do a big group selection and I'm going to bring in my Align Palette, and I'm first going to align the objects by vertical center, which they all are already, okay? But there's no um, quick trick for this, so I'm going to have to go in by hand, and then just, I'm holding the Shift key at the same time, and I'm going to just jut all of these things up to one another, so that they're perfectly set up. And then I'm going to go in in a second here, and I'm going to add some color, okay? I want these to be differentiated in our timeline so that it makes sense. Now, I'm not going to prescribe a specific color scheme, but you know, overall, uh, it should go within the theme of your infographic. But in our case, we're going to go with, uh, um, just for the example, we're going to use um, 
just uh, color, okay, or a rainbow rather. We're going to just go with, with that, right, just so we sort of have a, a preliminary thing to use. Okay, so realistically, I should be in CMYK mode to set this up here. All right, and I'm going to go to my palettes, default swatches, basic CMYK. Okay, I always work in CMYK because you can always go to RGB, but switching between RGB and CMYK can be dicey sometimes. Especially I like to leave it open just in case my clients want to actually um, print these graphics out and make posters out of them. We can go ahead. All right, so we're going to just get started here quickly and we're just going to go through the different segments and use a progressing color scheme, right? I like to sort of use a color scheme that moves so that you get a sense in the graphic of moving through time. Okay, so pretty straightforward. All right. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that because we set this up uh, by measuring and sort of extrapolating that to years, this is now accurate. This is going to be a, an accurate representation of a visual. Okay, so we're literally saying this pixel amount represents that. Okay, but we can now um, use this uh, in, a, in a nice way to sort of have fun with it, but we can also maintain the accuracy. Now we can scale this and change it, and that changes the pixel value, of course, but because it's now set up in a proportionate amount, if we do change it, it'll still be representative of that particular value. We can just say it is, but because it's proportionate, it makes sense. All right, so that's how we get away with that when designing these things. All right, so with this thing set up here, I'm going to grab it all, and then I'm going to make this thing into an artist brush. So I'm going to open up my brush palette here for a second. Okay, and now I'm going to click on this new brush window or this button right here. Okay, and you see you get different kinds of brushes that we can work with. I'm going to use the art brush. The reason I'm using the art brush and not some of the other ones is that I want this to be proportionate and the art brush gives me the ability to do that. So I'm going to say OK. And in this palette you can see there's a bunch of options to set up. So I'm going to call this uh, History Timeline. And we want the width to remain 100% and this set to fixed. Okay. And we want to do where it says it can go scale proportionately. We can always sort of play with the stroke limit on this, but I like to keep it the same and say stretch to fit stroke length. Okay, because if we want to have good positionability on the page for our infographic, we want to be able to have that happen. And again, we can get away with it because of proportionate setup. So I'm going to hit OK. And this now becomes a brush inside of my palette. All right, so now this graphic, I like to keep it, so I'm going to put it off just to the side just in case I need to adjust something later, okay? But now I have this brush that I can work with, so let's have a little bit of fun, all right? Let's uh, experiment with the way that maybe we can use this timeline. So the simplest thing is to try the example that we saw before in the U.S. flag, right? So this is just a circular timeline with it starting at the top, and then we sort of make our way through um, the history, okay? So if I come back here, I'm just going to simply draw a circle. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my pointer finger on the option key and then my middle finger on the shift key. All right? You can see it changes the way it shows the little crosshairs. And what this does is this does center scale. All right? um, traditionally, sorry, this is sort of a little offshoot here. A lot of designers do scaling this way, but option and shift, two fingers, and then boom, you get a center scale. This I like to use because it gives me a sense of real estate and really helps with my positioning. It's foreign to me to sort of drag from a corner and scale it that way. Because then it also adds a step I have to reposition it. A sub lesson in this uh, tutorial, but that's okay. So we're going to remove the fill and then we're going to bring the stroke to the front. And now with my brushes here, I can just click that and there you go. I get a, a donut hole um, pie chart, which is hey, that's sort of an unintended consequence. It's another way to do this. And I'm going to play with the uh, stroke palette. I'm going to bring that into here for a second so you can see that I can um, scale down and scale up this particular timeline, but it also keeps the proportionality going on here. Okay, so I can make this like super thick. Hey, it turns into a pie chart. And then when I bring the scale back down to reality, you can see 
right, the proportion is still remaining. So even though it scales up, right, obviously we see in this sort of peach section that it just got longer, but because the other sections scale proportionately, all good. It keeps the accuracy of the infographic, okay? So that's one way of going about it. Let's scale this and get it out of the way. But now let's play a little bit here, right? Maybe we want to do like we saw in the How a Bill Becomes a Law infographic where we see it sort of looks like an inchworm, right, or a game board. A lot of people use Candyland or different sort of game boards as a way to show a process or a timeline, which is fun. It's a great way to take people through time. So let's just play for a moment here and just we can draw it by freehand. I'm going to use the pencil tool. And I like to use a Wacom tablet to sort of get more natural connection to my hand, but I don't have it with me today. But I'm just going to draw just a little swirl here, okay? Now I'm going to show you a way to clean this up because it obviously has a little bit of a uh -uh right here, which isn't awesome. But we can clean that um, it, within the software. So, boom, I've added it. And you can see now it's kind of nice, right? It's a different way to approach the timeline. And I'm going to go up right now and clean this up by going to Object and then Path and then simplify. Okay, this is a great, great tool. It's been an illustrator for a long time. And what it does is you can click preview and there's an automatic setting and you can simplify a path and get nice smooth curves. It removes sort of the extra um, points that are added when the computer is really recording a vector path based on your, your mouse stroke, right? Where you sort of dragged. All right, and you can also click this show original and you can see sort of how your, your line is improved from where it went. And if you're happy with this, that's great. But if not, you can sort of play with the different precision points. All right. And then there's this angle threshold, which will sort of, well, we're not getting a lot of change here, but you can see um, changes the way that the curve looks. Okay. Um, one other fun thing I like to do is back in the stroke palette, I can sort of cap off the end. Oh, it doesn't seem to have me do that. Well, I would have had to have done it initially in my art brush. I can still do that. That's fine. Um, but that might be a nice way to sort of round off the end. Okay, all good. All right. And that's one approach. And <clears throat> a lot of people also ask me about, um, you know, using the pen tool. And you can certainly do that by creating a little zigzag here. And we just apply the brush. Okay, and there it is. So you can have a little bit more control if you don't want the curved approach. It's fine. And lastly, another fun one is if you don't want to freehand the shape, you can go up to the um, line segment tool and you have some fun things in here, like the spiral tool. So spiral is a fun shape that you can use for time and you can play with sort of how it looks if you want it more nautilus. That way you can go in that approach. And then Again, we click and add. And you can see because these lines get tighter, the overlap is a little much here. So I can just play with the stroke again, and that will help with the overall thickness of this. Let me lower that. Okay, you can see we don't have any much, much more of that overlap once we get to that point. Okay, so a lot of junk here. Let me get that cleaned up so you can see a little bit better. So many ways to go about it, but again, because we made the brush initially off of this first graphic, right, we can come back in again and change these proportions if we wish. Right? We can make this a little longer. Now, I mentioned before about the info palette. The info palette's fantastic because it will show you the width and height of something. So right now it's saying that this is 87. Okay, and as you do that, look, you see the width and height showing up in Illustrator. I am working with CS5, by the way. So I can make this now 63 years. And then all I need to do is remake the brush again. Art brush, OK. And all of our settings are the way we want it. We hit OK, and we now have an updated brush that we can work with. So this is just a great way to sort of show you how you can make a proportionate timeline that's a little bit more fun and you can work with um, to create some fun and exciting versions of a timeline that aren't just straight lines, OK? Making these infographics is uh, definitely a challenge, and trying to be fresh and creative and new is always uh, the task of the designer. So I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, look for more tutorials soon.